Hello, good morning. Friday is here. End of the week. But the week's not the same as it used to be, are they? This is Lindell from Fistful of Java. I figured I'd get up early as I'm taking the trash out and talk about something that um, became very important uh, the more I, I played music and, and recorded, and that is the signal path. Basically, cables. Um, electronics, you know, having good electronics is very good. Amps, microphones, all that. But if you're using the cheapest cables you can get your hands on, the signal path, you know, that carries the signal you're trying to uh, record uh, from the source to, you know, whatever you're using, whether it's through a board or Pro Tools or a patch bay or whatever, uh, degrades, you know, through those little cheapy $10, $20 cables. Um, so, you know, in a situation where, yeah, you've got a $2,000 Tone King amplifier that you're using, tube, and has a gorgeous sound, and you're putting a $500 ribbon mic in front of it, which is, which is something we actually did, um, all that's for naught if you put a $10 cable on the end of your $500 microphone and you get a dirty signal back to the board and so you get that nice, clean, pure sound that you're after, you end up with, you know, 70% of a clean, pure sound that you're after. I mean, you could have spent just a few more dollars on the cable and gotten what you wanted out of it. And so, this is something I learned when I had my own studio. It's something I learned when I, you know, was playing on stage. Now, one thing I do want to warn you about, if you have a good cable, because a lot of musicians out there think, well, a cable is a cable is a cable is a cable, which is wrong. I'll just go ahead and fly out and say it. It's wrong. Um, that will walk off with your expensive cables. I've had it happen to me more than once. Um, when I had instrument cables, they were typically 18 and 25 feet. Most of them were monster cables, so I spent somewhere between 60 and $90 for a cable. I go and do a jam session with friends and my cable would end up walking off somewhere. Well, it doesn't matter, there's one on the floor there, you can have that one. No, I don't, I don't want that, you know, junky cable you got out of the discount bin. I want the one I paid for. The one that weighs twice as much as the one you brought. The one that has the gold tips on the end. The one that you know, actually will reach from me to my amp without having to, re, you know, having to move furniture and stuff out the way. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that happened, you know, three or four times um, where my cable would wander off. Even one time was still plugged into my, in my guitar. So I just still unplugged it and then took it. So be, be prepared for that. Um, however, I can tell you that when I had my own studio and upgraded all my cables to monster cables, a lot of the things I was having a problem with disappeared. Those cheap cables are not insulated very well and you end up with little pops and hisses and noise that shouldn't be there. And a nice, you know, heavy duty cable will solve that problem. Also because of the insulation, you end up sometimes with uh, crosstalk. We'll end up with a signal from another cable, um, they'll entangle, you end up with two different signals through, you know, they'll, they'll kind of share signals together or uh, RC noise, where you pick up radio stations and other kind of crap uh, through your equipment because it's not grounded well. So good cables will, you know, help you solve some of that problem. Um, sometimes it's just poor equipment too though, so, but you don't want to um, add to the problem by, you know, using cheap junk on expensive gear. Um, anyway, that's my rant for today. Hope everyone's going to have a good day today. Get up there and do something productive today. Uh, even if you're stuck in like I am for the moment. Um, that's all we got for now. Until next time.